In this video, we're going to take a look at the basics of sketching and creating extruded features in XDesign. Let's start by opening our dashboard and selecting our XDesign tab to open the interface. When you open XDesign, it will remember where you left off, so there may be a part or assembly open if you were previously working on it. So that we're all starting on the same page, let's close the file by selecting the flyout for open and close in the action bar and select close. This brings us to the screen where we can start a new component. In XDesign, it is only possible to have one file open at a time. Select the option to start a new component, and this brings us into an empty component. We use the term component because both parts and assemblies start the same. We refer to this as a single modeling environment. The next thing we are going to do is set up the modeling environment units. This determines which units are used in XDesign when we model. Part units are not set, but rather modeling environment units. Once we set the units, they are remembered and any part we open will be displayed or converted to that unit set. To change the unit, select the down arrow in the upper right hand corner of the screen and select preferences. Here we set our length unit to our desired unit set. For this part, we will work in inches. The first thing I like to do when starting a component is to give the component a name. The name is not a file name, but more of a component name. The actual name of the part is assigned internally, and we don't use it for anything specifically. Now let's begin with a sketch. To start a sketch, simply select the plane on which we wish to sketch, and select the sketch icon. This will place us in the sketch environment and automatically set us in a normal orientation to the sketch. Let's go through some of the basics of sketching. First, make sure your sketch toolbar is active in the action bar. Next, select the line icon. In XDesign, there are two ways to sketch entities. You can click, hold down the mouse button, drag, and release. This sketches an individual line. You can also click to start, click to stop, and this will automatically start the next line segment. You'll then need to hit escape and end the command, or double click and end the line chain, but stay in the line command. Now that we have lines on the screen, let's talk about relations. Sketch relations are geometric relationships that, along with dimensions, give the sketch its size and shape. Things like horizontal, vertical, tangent, parallel, perpendicular are all sketch relationships that can be defined. To add relationships, simply select a single line and choose the relation that pops up in the pop-up menu. Here we're going to add a vertical relationship. Or use the control key select two entities and add a relationship between them. Here we show an equal relationship, which means the lengths are set the same, and perpendicular, which sets the angle between the lines to 90 degrees. If we select a line, the relationship applied to that line will appear. To delete a line or relationship, just simply select what you'd like to delete, in the case of the perpendicular relationship, and select the icon that looks like a trash can. Now since we don't need these lines and we're just using them for instruction, we can window around all the objects and delete them. With the blank window again, let's start sketching the shape we are looking to create, which is a center point rectangle. Click the flyout command arrow beside the rectangle and select center rectangle. With the first sketch of each component, it is important to relate the sketch to the origin. In this case, we are going to sketch the rectangle at the origin. When we are over the origin, our icon will snap and the appearance of the cursor will change to let us know we are on the origin. Then we can click and drag to a corner of a rectangle. It's that simple. Now we create a rectangle centered at the origin. The rectangle command automatically adds the horizontal and vertical relationship to our sketch. Now we need to set the size of the rectangle. Let's look at one of my favorite little sketch tips in XDesign. If you single click on a line, a dimension for what is selected will appear in gray. If you select the dimension and enter a value, it becomes the actual driving dimension of the sketch. It is a way to measure or dimension without even entering a command. In this case, we'll select the right side of the rectangle and make it 2.5 inches. 
in the top line and make it 4.5 inches. Our sketch turns black. This lets us know we have a fully defined sketch. What this means is that if we were to print this out and hand it to you, you'd be able to recreate exactly what we have on the screen. Okay, now let's turn this rectangle into a solid. The middle mouse button, or wheel on most mice, will rotate the part. If you click and hold down, the part rotates. Scrolling the wheel will zoom in and out. While still in the sketch, select the Feature action bar and pick Extrude. This brings up the Extrude dialog box. Enter 0.1875 inches for the distance, and then the green check completes the command. We now have a solid rectangular extrusion. Since we use a center rectangle centered at the origin, we now have a plane running through the center of the part, bisecting it lengthwise. Let's select this plane and start a second sketch. I use the mouse wheel to zoom in on the back corner and let's select the line command in the sketch action bar. Now we're gonna sketch a vertical line starting at the back corner of the part. The cursor will change to a square when you're on the corner and have a V when you're snapped vertical. Escape will exit us from the line command and now we pick the arrow beside an arc and select tangent end arc. Start this arc at the upper end of the line we just sketched and sketch it around about 180 degrees. Now in the action bar, select line again and complete the profile with a line snap tangent and then a line closing the loop. You'll know you have a closed loop when the sketch shades to a blue color. If you don't get a filled shaded sketch, delete the entities and try again. Again, we need to define the size. Start by selecting the arc and then select the gray dimension and enter a value of 0.2. The vertical line should be 0.6 inches and then use the control key to select the angled line and the horizontal line. The angled dimension will appear in gray and select that dimension setting it to 65 degrees. With our fully defined sketch we can pick extrude from the feature action bar and this time we'll select the drop down beside blind. This will give us various end conditions for our extrude. Here we will select mid plane, which will take the distance we enter and go half in each direction. Enter a distance of 0.25 inches and select the green check. For the last two sketches we used a plane to start the sketch. For this feature we will select the front face of the part and start a sketch on that face. Here we're going to use a sketch mirror to save us time and maintain symmetry left to right. Start by sketching a vertical line attached at the origin. Then select the line and in the pop-up toolbar, pick the construction line toggle. It turns the sketch line into a construction line. Construction lines help us define a sketch but are not turned into solid geometry. Now we sketch an angled line and we will add a tangent end arc. In this case, we are using the shortcut. If you draw a line, then the next line we drag away, back over the endpoint, and then away again, it automatically transitions us to a tangent end arc. If this isn't working, use the icon as before. End the arc on the center line that we just sketched. Add a second line across the horizontal edge to the center line and then use the control key to pick the center of the arc and the center line and add a coincident relationship. Mirroring is easy. Just select the mirror icon in the sketch action bar. In the top dialog, select the center line, which should be selected automatically. And in the bottom of the dialog box, select the three entities you'd like to mirror. Click OK and the sketch will mirror. We can use the dimension command in the sketch action bar to add dimensions. In this case, we select the height to the center of the circle, the length of the bottom line, and the angle to define our sketch.
Using our fully defined sketch, we can now select the extrude feature. The double arrow beside our distance will toggle the direction and enter a distance of one inch. When modeling parts, it's always best practice to add all our extrusions first, add all our cuts second, and add our fillets and rounds last. Here you will see we have all our extrusions added. So now we will add some cuts. Select the side of the back extrusion and start a sketch. We will sketch a circle. There are two ways to center a circle on another circle. First, we can highlight over the edge until the center point appears and then click and drag from that center point. Adding a dimension of 0.2 inches and the circle is fully defined. Now, select extruded cut from the action bar and in this case, our end condition will be through all one direction. This will cut a 0.2 inch circle through the part. We will add a half inch hole in the front. Select the front face of the part and start a sketch. In the sketch action bar, select circle. In this case, I sketch a circle off to the side and define the size of the circle to be 0.5 inches. Now hold down the control key, select the circle in the edge of the cylinder and select concentric as our relationship. This will move our sketch circle to the center fully defined. Again, we select extruded cut, but this time we cannot pick through all as it will cut the back of the part. We need to select up to next in this case to ensure that we only cut the geometry on the front extrude. The last item we are going to add to the part are fillets. In the feature action bar, select the fillet command. We can select the four corners of the part and enter 0.25 for our radius. This will round the corners to a quarter inch. With fillets, it is best to work from largest to smallest. Next, we will add some fillets to our extrude bosses. Enter a radius of 0.05 inches, and you can see with tangent propagation, it selected all the tangent edges for us. A couple more cosmetic fillets the same size and our part is complete. The final thing we need to do is save the part. Click on the save icon and the component will be written into our collaborative space. This concludes our lesson on sketching extrudes and fillets. Please check out any of our other lessons about designing in SOLIDWORKS X-Design.